What's up guys, Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So in this video, I'm gonna try to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna go in and see if I can kind of recreate an image that I found online uh, using some kind of black and white coloring and some shadows. So we're just gonna go through this, kind of see where the result ends up, and then what I'd like to hear at the end, um, especially from a lot of you who are really skilled at V-Ray, some things that you would change in order to adjust the way the rendering works. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So to start off, what I want to do is, I guess I want to show you the image that I'm kind of recreating first. And so the image that I'm creating is uh, an image that I found on Pinterest. So I look on Pinterest because it's like a photo search engine. It has a lot of cool ideas in it. So in this case, um, this pin is the spiral staircase photo by Romaine David. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to see if we could kind of recreate these lighting conditions within V-Ray. I thought that might make um, kind of a cool cool rendering. So what I've done so far is I've kind of modeled out my face and also my spiral staircase. And if you guys are interested, I can do a tutorial on my SketchUp website for how I created this. So I used an extension for the uh, stairs and then I came in here and I basically created some drapes back here and they're kind of placeholders right now. I just wanted something to be back there. Um, if if uh, all the rendering settings and everything else in here turned out fairly well, then I might go back in and change those out and make this a little bit more specific. But in this case, or a little, so, so that they don't look quite so uniform. But in this case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to first start off by trying to recreate the shadow settings from that image. Um, because wherever our shadow settings and our sunlight settings are within SketchUp, that's where they're gonna show up in V-Ray as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the shadows section of my tray. And if you don't see the shadow section of your tray, you just wanna go up to Window, Default Tray, make sure Show Tray is checked and make sure shadows is checked. And if you're on a Mac, then those are gonna be windows that are gonna pop up instead of this being a tray off to the side. But either way, you're looking for your shadows settings. And so in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna turn our shadows on. And when you're working in SketchUp, um, one of the things that really slows your model down is a having having your shadows with a whole bunch of geometry. Um, so I would recommend keeping this off until you're ready to start doing your rendering and working with your shadow settings, um, just so everything runs a little bit faster. But in this case, we're just gonna click on the show or hide shadows button. And in this case, you can see what I've already done is I've already come in here and I've kind of set up my shadows so that they give me the image that I want. And so sometimes what this means is you're gonna have to change the orientation of your model. And so when I say change the orientation of your model, what I mean is that um, basically SketchUp has a physical sun included. And this changes a little bit if you use like an HDRI or something like that. But if you're specifically trying to cast shadows like this, and let's say for example that your model was oriented if I was to flip it 90 degrees this way, you're not necessarily gonna be able to achieve the shadow look that you want, um, no matter how you adjust these sunlight settings, because the sun in this case only kind of shines down this way. So it's kind of moving across this way in your, um, in your 3D space. And so, you need to make sure your model is oriented correctly so that you can cast the shadows the way that you want. You can see how when I orient my model so that it faces this way, then the sun casts this shadow against this wall. And so if we were to come in here and we were to run a quick interactive render, so if I was just to click on this and just kind of rotate around and rotate down so that this shows up in my view, you can see that we've already kind of got the basics in here of a, a rendering that kind of matches up with our photo. So there's definitely some things we're gonna to wanna to change and we're also gonna to wanna to apply some different materials to this. But you can see how we've at least got this roughed out a little bit so that uh, it's casting the shadow that we want on this wall. And so now we're gonna stop our interactive render. We're gonna go back and we're gonna start applying some materials to this model. And so in this case, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna turn shadows off just so this isn't sitting here trying to uh, render those shadows in the background while we're just trying to apply materials. And we're just gonna apply some basic V-Ray materials to this. So we're gonna go into our asset editor and I'm gonna go look, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna look for a concrete that I can apply to this wall. And so in this case, if we go back and we look at our photo, 
um, you can see how the wall is kind of a, a concrete or a stucco look surface. Well, I'm going to use one of the uh, V-Ray concrete materials in this case on my wall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my asset editor and I'm going to go into the concrete section and I'm going to try to find a concrete material that makes sense. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make these a little bit bigger just so I can get a look at them. So I just drag the little slider all the way to the right. And so when I look at this, In this case, what I want is I want a little bit rougher concrete, but I want something, in this case, I'm gonna use one of these simple materials. I'm probably gonna use this last one. It's a little more uh, it's a little more of a worn stain concrete than the one in the image, but I'm interested to see how it works. So what I'm gonna do is I have this face selected. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click add to scene. And you can see how since I have this face selected, I can just right click on this image that shows up in my material list, add it, after I add it to the scene, and I can click Apply Material to Selection. And so when I apply that material, you can see how that gets applied to this wall. And uh, if you remember within V-Ray, these actually contain a size, um, these actually contain a size notation of what the actual size of the texture is. And so all you have to do is go into your material section and just match up with that. So in this case, this is a four meter material. So we just need to set our size to four meters. And so I usually end up doing a conversion here. So in this case, this would be four meters to inches. So this is gonna be 157 inches or 13 foot one. And so you can see how when I bring that in, that sizes this to something that looks realistic since everything in here is modeled pretty much to scale. And so the other thing I want to do with my concrete material is I just want to come in here and you can see how I modeled each one of these as a component. And so when I modeled these as a component, that means when I come in and apply materials to these, I only have to apply it once instead of multiple times because each one of these is an instance of the same component. And so I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to select this face and I'm gonna right click and apply the material to the selection. And you may need to kind of adjust this a little bit. So you may need to adjust the way this texture sits on this face. And so in order to do that, you can just right click, go into the texture section and use position texture, and you can just kind of move it over. So in this case, I'm just moving it over so I don't have one of these like form lines sitting right in the middle of this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and click out of that. And then I'm also gonna come in here and I'm gonna apply this to these side edges as well. And so I'm just gonna come in here and you can see this is actually in my model now. It'll show up in the in model section. And so I can just select it and I can just apply it with the paint bucket tool. And when you do that, you may, depending on the level of realism you're looking for, you may either need to go with a different material or you may need to come in here and just kind of rotate those. So in this case, if I use position texture, I can come in here and I can rotate this 90 degrees and you can see how it looks a little bit more. Um, it looks like it makes a little bit more sense in this situation. I'm also gonna move it up a little bit. And there we go. So now what I have is I have a wall with this concrete material applied to it that my shadows are gonna be cast on. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save the changes that I've made in my model. And we may go through here and change some of our other materials as well, but let's go ahead and do a test render and see how it's gonna look. And so you can see how this already looks a lot better. And we're gonna talk about lighting in just a second and adjusting these shadows to make them a little less defined, so a little fuzzier. But first, let's go in and apply materials to the, to the rest of the objects in our model. And so we're just gonna find V-Ray materials to use for this. And I'm just gonna do this real quick. I'm not gonna talk through a whole lot of it, but in this case, I'm probably gonna go through and find um, probably some metal materials like these galvanized materials and apply them to things like my handrails and uh, my center post and that sort of thing so things look a little bit more realistic. And so one thing you're gonna know is when you try to apply a material to this face in the center, it's gonna get kind of weird because of the way that SketchUp um, maps materials. So let's say for example I took this metal galvanized A 
added that to my scene, and then applied this to the group that I have selected, you can see how this doesn't get brought in in a way that looks very realistic. So in addition to the size, which I'm gonna fix really quick, You can see how basically what this does, if I was to turn on hidden geometry, is this applies this texture to each one of these faces instead of kind of mapping it across the curved face. And so that's that's not exactly the result that we're looking for. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, V-Ray's UV mapping. And so the way that that works is you can see how I have this geometry in a group for my center post. And I've applied this material to the outside of the group. So that's really important. You don't necessarily wanna do this inside the group. Um, the UV mapping, I believe is gonna work a little bit better if you just apply it to the outside of the group. But if you you right click on this and go down to V-Ray UV tools and click on triplanar projection world what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna map that material so that it um, basically fits across this face so instead of it being in here as a um, something that's applied to multiple different faces at once um, in that kind of jarring fashion this is more UV mapped across this And so you'll notice when I modeled the stair with a 1001 bit tools, each one of these steps got modeled as a uh, separate piece of geometry, but it's in here as a component. So these are all copies of the one stair component. So that means if I go inside this group and I apply that material, the same as kind of the material on our windows, um, it's basically gonna get applied to every face in here. And so in this case, I'm gonna try a metallic paint silver material and see how that looks. And so you can see how with this material, you're getting some reflection off of this face um, because this is now more of a metallic material. So I think this looks a lot more realistic than it did before. And so once we've got everything kind of textured out, um, we're gonna go in and the first thing I would do is I would save my model um, before we come in here and do a whole bunch of rendering. I've had some issues with SketchUp crashing with stuff like this before. So um, just make sure you're consistently saving as you make these changes. But now we have this ready to come in and just kind of work with our render a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my shadows back on. And so that just gives me kind of a view of what this is gonna look like. Now we're gonna come in here, we're gonna do an interactive render and figure out what else we need to do. And so for the glass, I've just kind of applied a simple V-Ray glass to it. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run my interactive render. And then what I want now is I want to kind of match up with that other image. And so what I want to do right now is I just want to preview this image in black and white because that's what we're going to save it as. So later on we're going to come in here and we're actually going to add an effect on top of this where we adjust the uh, the saturation of the color in order to bring this to a real black and white. For right now all you're going to do is just go in here and click on this button for monochromatic. And so when you click on the button for monochromatic what that's going to do is that's basically going to show you the rendering without your colors in it. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and preview this and just take a look at the way that it looks and the way it kind of matches up with that photo. And so one thing that I'm gonna wanna adjust is I'm gonna wanna come in here and I'm gonna adjust these shadows a little bit. And so I'm actually gonna leave my interactive render running so you can see what changes when we do this. But we're gonna go into our lights section and uh, right now the only thing I have in here is my sunlight. And we're not gonna change too much about uh, we're not gonna change too much about our lighting in this case. Um, you could turn your sun intensity up or down and it's just gonna adjust the way that, that that's gonna look. So you can make that a darker or a lighter image. But in this case, specifically what I'm worried about is I'm worried about the size multiplier of the sunlight. And so what the size multiplier of the sunlight does is that affects how blurry the shadows are gonna be. And so in this case, you can see how these shadows are fairly defined. And so if you want these shadows to be more defined, then you would turn your size multiplier down. And so what that does is that reduces the size of the sun image. And you can see how this becomes very defined. Well, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn the size multiplier up. And what you're gonna notice is as I turn that up, 
those shadow edges are going to get more and more blurry and less and less uh, defined. And so you can see how what that does is that gives me a little bit um, that gives me a little bit less defined shadows, which I think looks a little bit more realistic. And so I'm going to set that size multiplier to five. And so in this case, I'm pretty happy with the image that I've been able to create. And so now I'm gonna stop my interactive render and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do a final render. And so when I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my render output to a larger image. So in this case, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make something like a, we'll call this a 1280 by 720. And I'm just gonna turn on my safe frame for just a second to see what's gonna be shown within my image. I'm good with that. And so I'm gonna turn this off so that it's no longer interactive. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn my quality up to high. So you can see how this option for quality turns on when I turn off interactive render. You can't adjust the quality of the render when it's in interactive mode. And so now that I have this in here, I have my image width and height set. Um, I'm gonna have this set to monochromatic mode. Everything is kind of the way I want it to be. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do my final render. And so the last thing we're gonna do is we need to go ahead and we need to do a color correction so that we can save this image. Because if we were to save this image right now, so if I was to just to save this, and we were just to call this something like um, stair render, and then I was to open up the image, you'll notice that even though we have monochromatic mode selected, this is still coming in as a colored rendering. And while that's that's fine, that's not really the image we were going for. We were going for more of a black and white image that shows a little bit more contrast. And so what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn monochromatic mode off because we were just using that as a quick preview. And we're gonna open up our, our, our corrections control. And so when you click on this, it's in the lower left-hand side of the corner, or the lower left-hand corner, at least if you're using V-Ray 3.6. When you click on this, that's gonna pop up all these different options for different things that you can do to change the way that your image looks. So you can change things like your exposure. So if I was to turn exposure on, for example, I could change, change things like my brightness up and down, as well as my contrast, um, which we may mess around with a little bit to see uh, what kind of contrast we can get between our image and our shadows. But in this case, the one that we're looking for is the option for hue and saturation. And so we're gonna check the box for hue and saturation. Well, what that does is that allows you to adjust both your color hue as well as some other things about your colors. Well, in this case, we're specifically focusing on saturation. So the more saturated an image is, the more intense the colors are gonna be. And uh, you have to be careful. You see if I was to drag this all the way up, then you get some kind of weird colors shining through. But everything is definitely more intense from a color standpoint. Well, since we're going for like a black and white image, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna take that saturation, we're gonna drag it all the way to the left. And so in this case, that means your saturation is gonna be at negative one. And so now your image no longer has colors in it. It's basically the same as it looked with that monochromatic mode. And so you can come in here and fool around with some of the other settings as well to see if you kind of like the, uh, the effects that you can create. So if I was to maybe turn the contrast up, up above, I think that might give me a little bit better um, contrast between my stare and my shadows. But you do have to be careful that that stare doesn't really blend in when you do this. So you can kind of adjust this however you wanna do this. And then once you've made these changes, you can just click on the save button. And so um, when you click on the save button, it's gonna let you save this. And so in this case, I'm gonna call this stair render black and white. And now if I was to open this image as opposed to the other one, you can see how this is a black and white image where the other one we created, our original stair render, was a color image. And so you can use this color correction for a lot of different things. But in this case, this is gonna be the way that we can save our black and white image um, so that we can use that wherever you wanna use it. So that's where I'm gonna wrap up this rendering tutorial video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. I'd really like to get some feedback on the way that this uh, came together, if you liked it, if you found it helpful. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. Um, but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.